wine country. Oh, do we love it out mm -hmm. here. Lots of grapes, no wrath. Sonoma Raceway, perhaps the best natural terrain road course in America. And today, the NASCAR Cup Series goes on track to qualify for tomorrow's race. Beautiful track and a beautiful day, full sun. Temps going up into the high 80s. Track's gonna be very warm for qualifying. Here's the Sonoma Raceway that we used for NASCAR for the last 20 years. But this is the 50th anniversary of Sonoma Raceway, so we've reverted to the previous configuration, including turn six and six A, the carousel. We'll break it down into sectors for you, borrowing a trend from our European friends, as we go through group qualifying. So here is a look at Sonoma and turn four, to five, and there is the carousel. Turn seven back to the course we used last year, and that has confounded some drivers, perhaps confused a few others. <laughs> we saw a couple of money shifts, drivers trying to go from second to third, getting first instead. We had an eventful Friday. I think we're about to have an eventful hour. Well, I think, you know, and, and, and thank you to, to Mike Joy yesterday for getting all those cars out there that's, so Jeff and I can make some laps around yes, this track we did. That was fun. on the carousel. And uh, one thing I didn't notice up there in turn four, a lot of dirt and rocks had been kicked up just out of the groove. So uh, I, I thought that was going to be a problem today, but apparently we're going to resolve that. So I think we're going to be in for a wild qualifying session. Well, you got to run a few fun. laps with uh, Fox CEO Eric Shanks I alongside. I gave him pretty nice uh, <laughs> lap out there. <laughs> but no, it was great to get back onto this course, something that I did back in the, the mid-90s. And, and what it reminded me of is just by adding this carousel sector, the challenges go up times 10. Hey. And I think we're going to see some surprises today, and I think we're going to see some fun action, and we're going to see who the real road racer of this group is. One consequence of this new segment added, turn five, they've had to add what uh, track president Steve Page calls a molehill to the inside of turn five to keep drivers from shooting rocks and sand up onto the track. More on that after this. Only in Sonoma. Yes, those sheep are track employees. They have heart cards <laughs> and they keep the place groomed. Well, yesterday, Kyle Busch was not sheepish about approaching turn number four, entering the carousel new section of the course he went off not once, but several times and ended up down there at the old turn 4A to turn around. Regan Smith is with Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch had a busy day yesterday. You were helping NASCAR with the racetrack, figure out some new stuff for turn five. How do you feel about what they changed in turn five overnight? Yeah, I mean, everybody was just cutting the asphalt and putting their rights in the dirt and just spraying dirt all over the track. So we needed to do something about that. I, I got messed up on my qualifying lap. Every time you go through there, it's getting dirtier and dirtier. Somebody in front of you spraying dirt on the racetrack. So you just never knew what you had when you went through there. So to make it better, I think, for the competition and for the race and, you know, put a put a berm over there, a curb over there of some sorts to keep everybody from getting out of the dirt. So um, I, I think it was a, a good choice. And in um, the way that the racetrack went about it, they were very receptive. And I, the one question that I did have, though, was we've been racing here or they've been racing here since the 80s and going through turn five, going through that way. How the hell did that corner ever stay clean the way that it was? But yet the rest of these 40 idiots can't figure out how to go through there clean. So um, we made a change and we got it done and I think it'll be better. It's always exciting when we come out to wine country for the road course and your buddy over there in the Vineyard Vines colored M&M suit, he was talking about people kicking up a lot of dirt on the racetrack, which that's NASCAR and the track put the big berm up. Yeah, there is a, there's a berm. Um, which I think was needed. That was kind of a weird spot, uh, you know, on the racetrack with the new addition to the carousel and everything. I'm glad that they did that. Um, I'm hoping that this interview goes after his because I was, was watching. Well, he's already by. talked. Okay, so I overheard him call us all idiots, and um, I just wanted to make sure. Let's clarify. He did say 40, which would include. It was 40, not 14. It him as the 40th uh, addition to that idiots. Um, but um, I'm How many times did you spin yesterday? Oh, none. How many times did you How many times you, were you off the track yesterday? That was four. <laughs> Just trying to clarify where the, where the idiot is on all this. But um, 
No, it's, it's a ton of fun out here. It really is. It's a challenge. Um, it's a welcome challenge with the addition of the carousel and stuff like that. Our, our Rush Truck Center's Ford was really fast yesterday. The challenge today is very tricky. Um, this is a rhythm track. You know, you got to find that rhythm, and you don't have that luxury today. You've got to get out there and, and get the most and, and try, to, try to get in that rhythm. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. Thanks, Clint. Well, that's for Kyle Busch. I guess sometimes to find the limit, you have to exceed the limit. Well, I think Clint, Kyle was the old. We saw go off the racetrack yesterday in practice. That's where I'm going to leave it. I think Clint Boyer may have just exceeded somebody's limit. <laughs> The track is open. This is group qualifying. Round one, 25 minutes. All cars participate. Round two will be just for the top dozen, and that will determine the bush pole. Pretty busy racetrack, right? Now. Yeah, it is. But, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get some heat in these tires. So I think all these guys are going to ride around here until they get maybe up towards turn seven and build heat in those tires coming down the hill through the S's, and then those tires should be right as they cross that start finish line. I really like our sectors, by the way. I, I'm excited about this because I think this is truly going to show who is going to uh, excel in this new carousel section or the old carousel section. But, uh, you know, because that it's going to start reading it going into turn four and off of turn seven. So a lot of things can happen in that sector. And you're looking at turn four from the inside of the corner where they come off the straightaway and into the carousel area. This here is to the left is turn five long flat corner where they had to add the mole hill and when you come up over that rise heading for six what do you see Daryl absolutely nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing at all it is a I didn't realize until yesterday just how far over that hill you have to get before you see the carousel so uh, it's a really tricky little part of the track and not only can you not see anything the car wants to do nothing when it lands oh, yeah. in that first section of the yeah, carousel it because it's so downhill and falling away it's real light as it comes up on top of that hill and then you got to turn that thing hard left to get through that carousel so that's an interesting part of the track Cody Ware will be the first car on the clock. He was the first car out of pit lane. Now, one thing I find very interesting about why so many cars are on track, they they obviously, a lot of these guys feel like the track's going to have the most grip right now early before they start laying rubber down. Or otherwise, there wouldn't be this many cars out there. Daniel Hemrick back to the pits. Oh, actually, I saw a lot of guys just put some heat in the tires and then coming down pit road. Mike, I remember back in the day, we'd do a little qualifying. We might accidentally run off the racetrack on our cool down lap. <laughs> 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 Depending on who was next out. <laughs> oh, you're that guy, huh? <laughs> That guy. <laughs> Bubba Wallace was on track for about 10 seconds yesterday and spun on cold tires. I loved it. Bubba, I saw Bubba and he said, I need to make a lap. Picked on himself pretty well on social media. Uh, on Twitter uh, with a shot of a spinning little, I guess, kid's cozy coop or something saying, yep, there was me. <laughs> but that is, Mike, a big difference between 550 horsepower, which they've run the last several weeks, and today we have 750 horsepower, and these engines really respond in a hurry. And I would also say yesterday he was probably in more of a race mode where the air pressures were way down. Woo! Ooh, steps out, goes a little wide. Now that's coming out of the carousel. You get on the power early, and that's where you're going to end up. Yeah, heavy braking, slightly uphill here into turn seven. And then it's basically a, a hairpin turn that leads you into the S's. They're going to be carrying more speed into the S's today than they ever have before. You know, I, I noticed again yesterday that is there's a lot of, I guess you would call it runoff area. Yes. Or you could call it racetrack. It depends on how yes. you use that, you know, how you address that corner. You go in tight, run the bottom, or you go in, let it kind of diamond it off and get a, guy, a good shot down the uh, down through the S's. So depending on your style, I guess, depending on how you look at that turn. Now here's the other hard braking into turn 11 all the way down to first gear, one of the slowest corners on the track. Now, it's interesting, Jeff, that in 11, you hug the curbing to the inside all the way around, whereas turn seven is kind of a classic road race double apex corner. You diamond turn seven, you hug the inside in turn 11. Well, and that paint down there on the inside of turn 11 has some grip to it also, so it, it helps you carry more speed through there. If they put paint down to turn seven, you'd see them all on the paint. Okay. Mike, one big difference, there's a wall around turn 11. <laughs> you can't get out there very far, you'll be in the wall. That is turn big. seven is wide open. You can run in there and go all the way to grandstand if you want to. So we're, that's a little bit of a different look when you're driving the track. 
I, I, I don't know if uh, I know this track's hard to get a hold of. It's hard to get grip. But today is it's pretty hot out there. Mike is I think pretty close to 90 degrees. Track temp's got to be pretty high. That's going to make grip at a premium. Up and over out of 3A down into turn four. That, Treacherous. That 3A is a blind exit corner. And, and turn four is what I'm hearing the drivers are saying is the toughest part of this uh, configuration is it's downhill breaking into a right hand turn that's off camber. It wants to feed everything to the outside. So not only you have an issue trying to slow the car down, you also as you turn in can't get the front grip that you're looking for. And one thing I noticed about this turn, we're in the carousel here. If you drove in there too hard, you got the car. It pushed way, way out and you'd lose a lot of time trying to get the car back down to the bottom of the racetrack. So uh, that that is well, what it, somebody took the access road already missed I'm, it. Already bit. missed turn but four. That was uh, Ross turn, Chastain. I think that was turn seven. It was. And you got a lot of room there to kind of play with. So I think that may have been on his cool down lap. Uh, the 15 of Ross Chastain. And I'm uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, That's not, Kyle, not, not Kyle Chastain. Weatherman is uh, qualifying the car. Now this has a little bit of a, a bearing on Mark Truex Jr. because Truex was getting up to speed and just warming up the tires. He had to back away from Weatherman to get that run to start his lap. And Truex will pull in to the pits. And Mike, uh, the scuff like some of these other guys. Yeah. We used to do this, Mike. We used to go up the drag strip. Uh, if we win a single car quality, go all the way up the drag strip, turn around and come down through the S's and take the green. Uh, and we would work really hard to get some heat in the tires. Sometimes it was hard to do. OK, drivers uh, scuffing their tires, coming in, waiting just a bit. There's 18 minutes to go in this session. Local legend, it says on his shirt. How about that? He will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he falls in his he dad's will footsteps, be. <laughs> which he probably will. Ryan Priest, the rookie, is fastest. He is one of uh, three double duty drivers running the KN race as well as the Cup race. First time to Sonoma for Priest, and he is fastest. Ryan Blaney is on his hot lap, likely to take over the top spot. This is an impound qualifying, so this is their race setup that they're just making some tweaks for qualifying. And and that's one of the uh, issues uh, I was talking to Larry McReynolds about that the 12 team has had this year. We've seen them qualify really well in the past, but they've been struggling a little bit with the impound qualifying this year for Ryan. It's a pretty nice lap, guys. A uh, minute 35, 17. That's, that's not too shabby. It's only a tenth off of what we saw as the fastest lap yesterday not that Kyle shabby. Larson put down. I expect, I don't know, Jeff, I always found it on a road course when you got ready to qualify. You could pick up a lot of speed just by a little effort, extra effort on a driver, work on the car a little bit. I know this impound, that might change things a tad, but uh, I was always surprised how much guys could pick Woo. up qualifying. Yeah, you see right there, Clint Boyer, or sorry, uh, Kevin Harvick spinning those tires, trying to get some heat in the rear tires right away off the pit road. And right here is just so treacherous. It's such a short jump down that straightaway from turn 3A down to four there. It, it just comes upon you so, so quickly uh, that it surprises you. And then right here, this just, I could not get over how far you had to get up on top of that hill before you saw where this, where the carousel went. It was amazing. And then you'll listen, <laughs> man, a lot of issues getting some grip in those tires, these fresh tires for Kevin Harvick, but you hear how patient he has to be yeah. before he can pick up the throttle, get the full throttle off of the carousel. I think that was a driver that was not too very happy with his car at that point. So there's your turn seven, one apex, dime in the corner, get the second apex there, and you're off to the essence. I just really think he's trying to work those tires and, and get as much heat in them as possible. You notice he went the first gear down there in turn seven, too. Matthew Benedetto on the clock in the number 95. Omaha orange and what shade of white? Blue tone white. Blue tone white was what was on Darrell Walters' first cup car. He made, what, 30 some starts with that with that oh, yeah. paint scheme? Yeah. I, well, actually, uh, I won a, a, a USAC race in Nashville uh, with that car number in uh, that car uh, back in the day. That was only USAC race I ever ran and it was 200 lap over in Nashville. But, that's exact rep. I mean, that car looks exactly like the one I raised back in the 70s. 
Well, Ben Odetta showed a lot of speed yesterday. I'm a little surprised. He's about six tenths off of what Ryan Blaney ran right now. I was expecting to Ben Odetto to really lay down lap. I think he's going to be good in the race. It's a great lap by Blaney, I think, guys. Right there, that's the toughest part of this course <laughs> because when you crest the hill in turn 3A, you don't know if that car is going to land on the asphalt, on the rumble strip, or out in the dirt. Yeah, it's and blind, blind exit. And you can already see he's half a second down to Ryan Blaney. Shows you just how good Ryan Blaney came up the hill, turn one, turn two, and to the, uh, this carousel section. That's where you diverge from the drag strip to that straightaway up to turn seven. This ought to be a pretty good uh, test of Blaney's lap because I think Boyer should be pretty good. I, I you know, th there's a lot more to turn one than you really think that of, of speed. If your front is cutting well, you can carry a lot of speed one up to two and, and transition over that hill. And Jeff, I just think it depends on how brave you are right on that, coming up over to the top of that hill, that carousel. If you're willing to drive over the top of that hill under the gas, uh, with, uh, with the gas down and have at it, hopefully he had a, you'll make it. He had a great apex at six, was so hard on the throttle, he lifted the left front wheel coming out of six, coming out of the carousel and up that chute. Yeah, and that, that tells me his setup for the race is about uh, maintaining those rear tire grip. So he's going to have a softer setup. Might not be as good here qualifying because it might lay around over a little bit and not be as good in this fast section through the S's as a stiffer platform would be. So Harvick to fourth behind Blaney, Priest, and DiBenedetto. A little bit treacherous right here getting through this corner too, Mike. You come down those S's, you're hauling the mail about 140, maybe 50 miles an hour. And you have a lot of time to think ahead for turn 10. Do I really want to be going this yeah. fast through that corner? Boyer really made up some time in that braking zone and through turn 11. Chris Busher to second. Those JTG Doherty cars running well here. My David Reagan Busher. to third. And Boyer to third. Denny Hamlin putting together a really nice lap. Lost a little bit off of turn 11. Still pretty good. Kurt Busch to fourth. Third for Hamlin. How about Chris Buescher? Yeah, that's, that's a heck of a lap. That's a heck of a lap, guys. Alex that's Bowman like that goes to third. Chris Buescher with a nice lap. And now on the left of your screen, that yellow line denotes the top 12 who will move on to round two, the final round. This is Chris Buescher. On his cooldown lap, he just doesn't want to go through the carousel and maybe get somebody else's way. I think this is uh, possibly Jimmy Johnson just getting up to speed. Carrying our visor camera. It's gonna be, there's going to be some great shots from that. Whoa, a little loose right there. Eric Amarola showed a lot of speed on the long runs yesterday. And again, I think we're going to see a, a, a lot of change as far as covers and goers in this race of those who qualify up front have a fast car for one lap versus those that have that speed on the long roads. And I think Almirola is one of those guys like Boyer has a very fast car after about nine or 10 laps. Looks pretty free. Back end steps out a little bit, but that's not unusual when you're putting the power down. So uh, we'll see how he ends up here. Looks pretty good. Uphill to turn seven. Trying to get to get this one. Hop in there too, brother. <laughs> now Kyle Larson is our pole sitter the last two years in a row and was fast in practice. And something about Chip Ganassi racing, I know they have some IndyCar experience from this track, yep. but if you look at our pole sitters in the past, besides Larson the last two years, go back to Jamie McMurray also drive for Ganassi. So I think Kurt Busch and, and Kyle Larson are the favorites to win this pole, although a little bit wide no, off the carousel there. there. Pretty wide. I don't know how much that hurt him because there's a lot of room there to get out a little wide, but uh, certainly slows you down a tad. Well, he's making it up, coming into this braking zone into turn seven. Yeah, his car's looking good. You talk about Ganassi's Indy cars. I think they've won the pole here four the last six times they've been here. So I don't. I know it's an Indy car and it's a stock car, but it's data. It's information. Now, this is really why I think Larson's off. car is going to really shine because, again, his car's not as good in the long runs, but it has that stiffer platform, doesn't lean over as much, carries a little bit more downforce as he comes through these fast sections. <laughs> and uh, he's taking advantage of those fast Ooh, sections, too. Hey, man, all he has to do is get through turn 11. Look at that thing cut late, drive off straight, really nice. Solid run, solid lap.
Building on it here as he comes out of 11. What's this going to be, guys? To the top, 134 point, a minute 34.59. Wow, nine. that is a half a second over. Oh, left rear tire on the 20 of Aaron uh -oh. Jones. Got a tire going down the whole time. I thought I was really loose. <laughs> now he did complete his lap. He is 21st at a minute 37.5. Mm, that's on three wheels. <laughs> There's Owen, to... Kyle, Kyle Larson's son. And... And here's Joey Logano. I'm just going to go out on the limb and say ain't nobody going to beat that 42. That's a heck of a lap, guys. 130. Well, remember, five. this is just to get to round two, oh so got to do it again. Not that he can. I think he will. Three Hendrick cars in the top ten, Bowman, Elliott, and Johnson. I mean, if I was large, I'd be sitting there by chest poked out saying, get you some of that, boys. Well, here comes Kyle. Boy, he, Larry, he had his myriad of problems yesterday. What were he and Adam Stevens up to? Well, I talked to his team this morning, including Adam Stevens, and they said one thing about Kyle Busch, you never have to worry, is he giving you 100%. And that area where he kept overshooting turn four under braking, that's new. That's not what we've run here before. And he was just trying to find out where the threshold was, and he said if he missed it, he wasn't going to just do something real aggressive and spin the car out. Just go on and run through it. Yeah, Mike, uh, Larry, that's what I said. There had to be a method to his madness. Yep. You know, you do that once, that's just an act. You do that two or three times, you're trying to learn something. Kyle Busch fifth as William Byron goes to second. That's pretty nice lap by Byron. He's that? been fast all, you know, he was fast yesterday in that 24 car. Yeah, rookie last year. Happy to get that rookie stripe off that rear bumper and, and bring some experience to a road course. Oh, Logano was Logano was just so close. Took it in deep into turn 11. It's going to move him on, but uh, he had a pretty good lap going. He's another guy like Kyle Busch who you know he's getting everything out of that car. Look at that rental rocket for Byron. Second in round one. Third for Logano. Like rip Michael me a McDowell in the top 12, bumping think, Almirola. I think I could rent me a car like that. <laughs> and Eric Jones has made it around. Or some damage to that left rear. That's that's a long way to come around this racetrack on a torn up left rear. So 33 cars have been on track. McDowell with a lot of road race experience. Uh, had, a, had a good practice run yesterday. Looked pretty good the first half of his run. Lost a bit of time in the latter half. Mike, how would you like to be uh, the oldest guy at 29 years old in the top five? <laughs> I mean, look at that. You got Larson, Byron, you got Blaney, you got Busher, uh, you got Bowman, you I got would, Elliott. I wouldn't mind it so much. <laughs> <laughs> be kind of nice, wouldn't it? I think that experience pays off and over the season and certainly in this race, saving those tires, saving that equipment, but he is also our, our defending champion. Amen. So, Larry, if you're uh, Clint Boyer or Kurt Busch or Al Marola, or Boyer's okay right now, he's on the bubble, but if you're any of those drivers, would you go back out to make a second run in hopes of advancing? Yeah, I mean, that's just that's a tough question because one thing that you have to do, Mike, because it takes a minute and 34 seconds, 35 to get around here. One, you need to leave pit road with that amount of time left on the clock to start a lap. But that's if you run around there hard because you're going to use up the tires. But yeah, if you're back there, it, it I, I think I really think Harvick is safe. I think Menard's safe. But you're back there a little bit further. Well, I'm sorry, the top 12. Boyer, no question. I think he needs to make another lap. Well, Kevin Harvick has gone out to make another run as Brad Keselowski is on track. And here's our Fox Ghost car between the two fastest cars in sector two. Yeah, so this is that tricky turn four everybody's talking about. You can see Larson went in there a little bit uh, further and harder than the 24 of William Byron. So Byron made up some speed on the exit there as he goes into the carousel. We saw the 42 struggle a little bit here through the carousel, but he really makes up for it once he starts to get into this braking zone into turn seven. Well, the 42 pushed up in the carousel. I mean, look look at that braking into but turn man. seven by the 42 of Larson. Here I come, get out of my way. And then he launches off of this corner also, got a great drive into the S's. What I noticed there about Byron, Jeff, is he is hitting every single apex. And I think that's a lot of what iRacing and other sim platforms allow you to do when you come to a road course. You 
know where those apexes are and you know how to get to them. Mike, if I had to guess, nobody spent more time in a simulator preparing for this race than William Byron. If I had to guess, that's probably true about everyone. <laughs> that, 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 that is one of the hardest working young race car drivers I've ever seen. But he is prepared every week. But it's like you said yesterday, Darrell, as we ride Martin Truex. You can teach somebody to road race. You can do that on a sim. They can go out, they can perform. Oval racing, whole different story. A seat of the pants. Yeah. How about Daniel Suarez putting together a great lap. Had some issues yesterday, missed a shift, had to go to a new engine, but it's not stopping him from putting a heck of a lap together here. And it's just fun to watch him bounce off those curves <laughs> through the S's. Just, and you know what, Jim? You know how hard that is to keep a car under you down through those S's carrying speed. Well, he's carrying speed right wow. here through turn 10. He's on full attack mode. In the green. Great into uh, that break. Briefly. Zone. And again. Yeah, it gets wide off of turn 11. Unfortunately, he's going to lose a little bit of time here. But is he going to make it into the top dozen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he'll make it in the top 12. Not a bad lap, really. Second. All right, good job, MP2. Uh, get your uh, switches on. They second that five. Shortcut up from four to seven. And Mike, remember yesterday when I told you these guys will pick up a second qualifying? That's what Kyle Larson picked up. A wow. second from his practice yesterday. Difference between the top two, a little more than a tenth of a second. So this the bubble is Truex. Well, right now, if I'm Kyle Larson, I'm worried, did I get too much out of it <laughs> in round one? Because these tires do uh, take quite a beating around this racetrack and give up a lot. So hope uh, hope there's some grip left in him for this round two. He's going to need it. Yeah, I think you're right, Jeff, except the only thing I'll be thinking of was the worst I can do is 12. <laughs> well, Martin Truex has bumped Michael McDowell. Jimmy Johnson just went back out trying to protect his 11th position. And this is a bit of a surprise there. We were just on uh, the number one of Kurt Busch. I really expected oh, he yeah. to battle his teammate Kyle Larson for this pole, and he's uh, right now back outside the top 12 and 16. Yep, that surprised me. I thought that team would be right there. Parker Kligerman on track. He had a couple good laps here yesterday. He did. Ooh, a little hop in the rear. The whole whack in came went, off the went ground. Into that corner. <laughs> oh my gosh, Parker. And you can see his car is not laying over near as much as some of these other cars. See Harvick out of the way because he's completed his run. So is Truex, not wanting to impede anybody's progress. Kyle Larson really hustled it down through the S's, and uh, I think that may have been the difference in his qualifying lap. We'll show it to you with Ghost Car here. Well, and I really believe they have a setup that is going to be better through the S's. I think it just has a platform that holds that rear spoiler up, that front splitter down. And you can see as he runs through these S's, he just carries great speed. But I mean, William Byron also right there with him. But this is probably where he's going to make up through turn 10 into turn 11. Remember how strong Larson was into the braking zone in turn seven. Again, he does the same thing into turn 11. Slowed it. He slowed it down really nice through the center to get a better launch off. And that's the difference between these two guys, uh, the, the other two behind him. Yeah, we're talking about uh, about a tenth and a half. It's the only difference. All right, time has expired, so everyone who has started a lap can come around to finish. But Larson did not secure that first spot until the after the exit of turn 11. Wow. Truex on the bubble, a minute 35.35. And you can see, you know, it's just so hard to go back out a second time and make up any time on these tires. They fall off so quickly. And Clint Boyer not going to advance. Nor will Kurt Busch or Ryan Brees. I, I know McDowell didn't make it in the top 12, but I, I'm telling you, 13th, he's got to be really happy with that lap. Great Busch got to be happy with his lap, too. The fastest 12 will move on, led by the pole sitter here the last two years, Kyle Larson. That is Haley Deegan, one of the brightest lights in NASCAR's developmental K&N series. She is on the pole for today's race this afternoon. And for the Cup Series, 
Here are the drivers who have secured positions 13 on, led by Michael McDowell and Clint Boyer. You know what I see here on this list, Mike? I see a lot of cars that are going to be coming forward when they drop the green flag. Here's Regan. Well, Michael McDowell, oh so close to getting into that top 12 and making it to the next round. Still your best ever qualifying effort at Sonoma. How do you feel about your car for tomorrow? Yeah, I feel really good about our car in race tram. The left travel stop forward Mustang was good. Um, you know, to be that close to the second round, you always want a little bit more, but uh, really proud of everybody, uh, you know, at front row, brought a fast car. Need a little bit more to be with those uh, top five, top eight guys, but uh, I feel like we can hold on in the long run and uh, it's road racing, anything can happen. Michael with a lot of road racing experience and Jeff you noted Haley Deegan was here a couple weeks ago to race. Yeah I, I saw Haley the other day and asked her what she thought about the carousel. She goes well I actually ran a race here. I think it was a Mazda race a couple Formula weeks cars. ago to yeah. prepare wow. for her race this week and obviously that paid off. Now she's uh, going to be starting from the pole in that K&N race. That will be fun to watch. But first 12 drivers will race for the Bush Pole here at Sonoma led by Kyle Larson Daniel Suarez William Byron and Joey Legault. What a bunch of young guns. <laughs> Kevin Harvick, 23rd in round one. One of those who will start pretty deep in the field here at Sonoma. Been a challenging weekend for Kevin Harvick. We rode on board with him a lot yesterday and, and really never quite saw the car uh, comfortable or, or him at, at, at his best. I mean, you could tell he's just struggling with certain aspects of this track all day long. Yeah, you see Mike when he, we were on, on board with him there, he was a, a driver that was very aggravated. Uh, the car would not. It, as Jake Elder used to say, that car wouldn't do no kind of nothing. Yeah, even <laughs> just trying to get up to speed. That's right. He was having a tough time. But one thing I noticed, all four Henry cars in the top 12. And here's a guarantee. Here's a money back guarantee. You put DW's paint job on your car, you're going to qualify in the top 20. <laughs> yes, the three Darrell Walter tribute cars here are 17th, your number. 18th and 19th. Top 20. Right together. Every One, week. <laughs> Reagan? Well, we saw Kevin Harvick sitting on the wall. Eric Almirola, his teammate, came up just short of missing the second round of qualifying. What was your car doing in qualifying? Um, it actually drove pretty good. The driver gave up some in too many different areas of the track. So uh, I've been here before and, and tried too hard and made too many mistakes and, and cost myself a good starting spot and then today I didn't try hard enough it's just there's always that balance here and you know I feel like our car was really good in race trim yesterday on the long run I didn't feel like we had the short run speed that some of the other cars have but I feel like you know this place is really bad on tires and it wears out and I feel like we've got a really good Smithfield Ford Mustang uh, you know after 10 laps or so so um, I thought we were good enough to make the top 12 but the driver gave up too much. Next, Regan. 32 drivers broke the previous track record for this configuration. One minute, 37.751 is uh, Mark Martin's record. Set in 1997, the last year we ran the course with the carousel. Now, Mike, I'm dating myself because I was in that race in 1997. <laughs> um, and if you'd have told me I could go three seconds faster than I did back then, I would say a stock no, car? Way. no way. It tells you, you know, how far these cars have advanced. Um, you know, fuel injection certainly, even though maybe not more power back then, back then much smoother in how the power is used. And obviously, a lot more grip in these race cars today. And, and probably the tires have, have come a long way yeah. also. Larry, I wonder about something. You know, the segments are pretty short, 20 laps. What, a 20, 20, and 50? 50. So if you've got a good short run car, you should be able to probably take advantage of that with those cautions falling the way they are. Yeah, the, the, the caveat's going to be the third stage, DW. That, that's a 50 lap stage. That's a lot of racing around a two and a half mile racetrack. But as we know, strategy is going to be all over the place. But yeah, I would look at the first two stages is what you'd call a fairly short run. Yeah. I, I will say adding the carousel and that braking zone into turn seven has added another great passing area. Oh, yeah. So before track position I thought was even more critical. Now if you have a fast race car and you can make up time from lap nine or ten to say lap twenty five. Yeah. You're going to make a lot of passes yeah. and, and I think that's where you got to be careful. You can lose a lot of positions here if this thing goes long green. Yeah, I, was, uh, I was thinking more about Kyle Larson. And how we've seen him have a really fast car qualify on a pole. This be if he wins the pole, they'd be third year in a row. 
uh, and, and how he's had a pretty good car on a short run. But with those segments, 2020, he should be pretty good shape through the first half of this race. The last 50 remains to be seen. Hey, but, hey, uh, hey Larry like Mack, tell us your stat about Kyle Larson. Yeah, Kyle Larson, as we know, he has set on the last two poles. But Jeff, you talked about a stiff platform to keep that spoiler up, to keep that splitter nailed down. That's good for fresh tires, a qualifying run, but it ends up biting you on long runs in the race. And I've got numbers to support Kyle Larson. His average start here at Sonoma is 2.8. It's his best track as far as qualifying. His average finish position here is 19.0. Wow. It's his 18th worst track as far as finishing, average finish. Thanks, Larry. Now note the telemetry lower left as Joey Logano now hammers it coming down through the S's. But when you get to this one, you're going too fast to keep that throttle down. You got to breathe it through that last left hander. You do. You've got to come out of the throttle to set that nose to get it to turn into the corner. You got to be real careful on throttle application and not spin the tires. You can see just uses a light amount of brake just to set the. Whoa! That's using all the track right there. And need, then some. He might need to use a little more brake, get the turn in there to slow it down. And right here off of turn 11, doesn't get wide open to. He's almost straight uh, you know, coming back to the start finish line because it's so easy to spin the rear tires. I might catch where the really, that's where the good drivers are. They just, they feel the rear tires gripping and they, as they, Add fuel, they add gas. He keep putting that gas down, picking up rear grip. Now, what this was was an effect of how much speed he carried into 10, and as he came off there, he realized he needed to put more wheel to it, and that brought the back end around. Like those Turn seven, shoes. Kyle Busch. Clean. Double apex. Making me dizzy. <laughs> that is on the ground, fellas. One there. Breathes it. Yes, back in. I know. And this is also a blind exit. We've got some blind entries to some corners. That's a blind exit. Stayed in third gear. Yeah, pretty much third gear all the way through here. You might be able to go to fourth for some transmissions. Woo. That was, that was a, a smooth <laughs> no. downshift right along those tires. Second by four tenths of a second to Joey Logano. Yeah, it's a pretty nice lap by Joey Logano. I mean, you know, if you if you look at his session one to session two, I mean, almost identical to what he ran. I think that's that's what's important. If you don't lose time in round two, then you're going to have a, a good starting position. Turn two for Ryan Blaney. And I, uh, Jeff, I think a lot of that's planning, not. Really getting on the car, or taking you know, getting back in the gas, or using up those tires. You get all the way around here to make your qualifying run, so you save a little in those tires for the second round. Definitely, and and probably some air pressure adjustments can help with that too. Going to turn five, and then up over that blind rise. There's a flag station on the right. You kind of have to glance there to see if the caution's waving. You have no idea yeah. what's on the other side of it. Yeah. I it, think there's maybe also like a treetop in the yeah. distance that you might be able to use as a reference, but there's very few references. I hope they never cut that tree down. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be in trouble. Yeah, and Mike, if you go by there and the guy's waving, you may have gone too far. That's right. <laughs> This a, I, I love the turn seven. I thought it was fun because you could overdrive it a little bit, slip up the track a little bit, and still get a nice exit off that corner into the S, X, S's. So I, I thought it was a lot of fun that turn was. And again, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of action down there in this race. It's a great, tomorrow. great opportunity to pass, no question. Chase Elliott haven't talked a lot about him, but uh, it's turned out to be a pretty nice road racer. He has a win at Watkins Glen. Who would ever thought his first win would have come at Watkins Glen on the road course? All right, now Joey Logano's fastest. Kyle Larson is on track. You can watch his lap live on the right and Ghost Car against Logano on the left. Yeah, and these are through the S's coming down the Whoa. hill. Or sorry, this is now going into turn four. So that was off of turn two, three, and three A. Drag race. I, I, you can just see Larson is so good into the braking zones. Everywhere getting in the corner, his car stops extremely well. See, he runs a wider line through the carousel, but gives him that straighter shot off on the exit. We saw where Logano's car's a little bit loose, 
hanging the back end out. Now, boy, uh, Logano made up <laughs> a lot more in that breaking zone than Larson did. But he paid for it. He Look how far up the hill he went. That's where Larson has been really, really strong right here, getting up to speed to get through the S's. Right Larson here, he was, really goes. Where Larson was best was coming out of turn 11 to the start finish line. Yeah. Well, remember, Logano had a little mistake. Here's coming through nine. We're going to be in 10 where he made that slight bobble on the exit. And that might be where Larson makes the difference here. Got a little wide right, right there. Right there. Larson right, there. right up alongside him. And there he goes. But I, boy, I tell you what, I thought Larson was driving in the corner, Steve, but Logano. There he goes, really and here he comes. <laughs> Crossover move. Great drive off for Larson. What's it going to be? Man, nice drive. He gets off turn 11, like you said, Mike, really, really, really well. Kyle Larson to the top by nine one hundredths of a second. And here comes William Byron. Yep, just started his lap. Oh, sorry, no, that's the end of his lap. Second. And Byron wow. is second. He beats Logano by half a tenth and trails Larson by four one hundredths. Poor old Joy Logano, the oldest guy in the group. I just tell you, 29 years old and you're the old guy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> See Jimmy Johnson, the eighth position. Jimmy Johnson's lap was only three and a half tenths of a second behind Kyle Larson, but right now it has him in ninth. Yeah. Three and a half tenths. Eight positions. Just had those three and a half tenths up over every lap. <laughs> Pretty soon Larson will be out of sight. <laughs> a lot of different ways to run that carousel. You can see yep. some guys go in shallow, carry more uh, speed to the center, Ooh, a little wide. But you saw he missed the, the apex of the carousel, so he had no choice but to end up wide on the corner unless he just feathered the throttle, and that would have been yeah, slow. Once you get out wide, Mike, it was a little slick. It's hard to get the car to turn when you get out wide. Using those rear tires up on the exit of turn seven. Still a nice lap together. I like car his goes uh, through the S's really Yeah, well. I like the way he looks through the S's. He's cutting those corners just all right. All right, all cars can come back. See how he gets through this corner. Got in there a little shallow. Yeah, it's so tough when you're putting a good lap together. You get to turn 10, you go, what do I do? Do I want to attack it or do I want to survive it? <laughs> right. So how many poles in a row this big for Larson? Yeah. Three. Three in a row, but Truex is still there. Truex. Hamlin clocks in fourth. Now Suarez fifth, or Hamlin was fifth. Now Suarez yeah, Truex is fifth. Losing some speed here at the bottom of the S's. Don't think he can make up three and a half tenths mm -hmm. through turn 11. But I, I do think that was a nice lap by Suarez, Mike. I, he got through the S's really, really well. Remember this 19 ends up. And Truex is eighth, six, seven, eight for the Toyotas. Chevrolet owns the front row with Kyle Larson and William Byron. Kyle Larson has now won the third most polls tied with his former Ganassi teammate Jamie McMurray with three he and William Byron makes it an all Chevrolet front row for tomorrow Matt Mike alongside a local legend I'm with Kyle Larson third straight poll here what do you like most about the trends you're seeing for the race tomorrow. Uh, I don't I guess the trend of, of my three polls is that we get the pole and then struggle in the race so I hope it's not the same for tomorrow but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I felt good uh, on our mock run yesterday in practice. Ran a good lap, and then both of these two rounds, I, I ran good. I felt like I overdrove the first, you know, session, and, um, and then the next session, I was like, all right, I just want to calm down, not making mistakes, and probably underdrove just a little. Um, so yeah, I felt like through the carousel and turn seven, I probably underdrove some and gave up a little bit of speed, but felt like I made up some time in other areas too. So uh, cool to get a, a third pull in a row here at my home track. Um, thanks to Credit One Bank. Uh, well, they left, but all, all my guys, all my guys for preparing another fast race car. So um, we'll see if we can try and do a little better tomorrow than we typically do in the races. All right. Owen, how about a chug? So the top five starters are all under age 30, Daryl, but. But when you get to the race, it's a different story, Mike. 
16 of the last 18 races here have been won by drivers. 30 or, 30 or older. That's amazing. So we'll see you tomorrow with the Toyota Save Mart 350 on FS1. Hey now. Coming up tonight, the trucks at Gateway and our race tomorrow. Now we're going to send you to Tigers Indians and get ready for tomorrow's race on FS1.